Hi, I'm Jeff. I work for Advanced Tank Services, and uh, I'm going to demonstrate an oil tank tightness test today. Uh, basically, we start, we'll check all the fluid levels in the tank, we'll do a corrosion test on top of that, and then we try to pull two soil samples. As long as everything's good with the soil, then we're going to move on to do the actual tightness test. And uh, we'll get started now, and we'll show you how that's in this all case, done. Uh, the customer wants to get tank insurance, tank, so that's why we're, we're out here today. All right, so we're going to stick the oil tank. I'm going to add some water paste to the stick, make sure there's, see how much water there is in the tank actually. There's generally a little bit. So now I'm going to get my metal detector and make sure I know which way the tank is laying. And I'm going to try to take some soil sand. All right, so I can see the tank runs long ways away from the vent pipe. That's good. I'm just going to figure out where to take soil from. And another, another common question we get is um, how do we know we're not going to hit the tank when we're taking soil? Um, there's a couple ways. Generally we can tell just by the, the way the pipes are set up. We can see how the tank is, is going to be situated in the ground. But we also have metal detectors. And to be totally honest, I don't even know if I'm strong enough I would be able to put a hole in the tank by hand. The, uh, the tanks are a lot thicker than we think and um, I don't think anybody's really ever put a bar through the tank so that's not anything to worry about. Um, we have to take the soil samples. We do it as kind of a precautionary thing. Um, if we pull a dirty soil sample we don't want to pull a vacuum on the tank because we already know the tank's leaking and we don't want to stress anything any further. Got the pilot holes made, and we're going to get the slide hammer with the spoons. Well, when we take the soil samples, we, we do the, uh, we have a field screen, we have our PID meter. If we find anything, if we find any oil in the, in the soil, we already know there's a problem with the oil tank. So that, that ends the tank, the tank test right there. We'll, we know that there's a leak and we won't draw a vacuum on the tank because we don't want to we don't want to make any problems that the tank has any worse um, in this case we were able to find you know there was no contamination in the soil so we went right ahead and did everything else um, All right now we're going to get ready to start the actual vacuum test we went through our corrosion and we did our soil test both of those went well here so now we move on to the vacuum I'm putting my test manifold here and I'm going to plug in the the microphone, the microphone that runs to the computer, and you know, we're going to draw a vacuum on the tank and we're going to listen for any kind of air coming into the tank. Here in some, some of the, the customer information and the tank information about the size of the tank, what kind of, um, what kind of fuel is in the tank, and it all goes into our, our personalized program that's set up for this tank test. Once all that's done, I'm going to listen first with the headphones, make sure everything is quiet, make sure the furnace isn't running or anything like that, and we'll let the computer take a reference read. Where we take a reading, it measures what the tank sounds like while it's not under vacuum. And that gives us something to compare it to once we draw a vacuum on the tank. Alright. We've got our reference. Looks, numbers look normal. And now we're going to draw a vacuum on the tank. I'm going to let it sit for about a half an hour. Listen with the headphones, make sure we don't hear anything funny. And uh, let's see if the computer wants to pass it or not. Okay, so now that we got our corrosion test done, our soil test done, both of those passed nicely, we're going to go ahead and do a vacuum test. Um, I took a reference reading from the tank, so we know what it sounds like when it's just, there's no vacuum. So now we're going to start drawing a vacuum. Let's see what happens. <laughs> just to make sure there's nothing going on. Alright, got the tank under vacuum now. I'm not hearing any noises inside the tank, well, aside from distant settlement. So as we draw vacuum on the tank, it does shrink a little bit. Um, seems good, now we just got to give it about a half an hour. 
And uh, as long as it stays like this, this tank should pass. Done with the test. This tank passed nicely. Um, what we do is we have the, the microphone in there that I showed you before, the one that's in the tank. It gives us all a whole bunch of data and we make a graph out of it like this. Well, the computer makes a graph out of it. And uh, this, is, this is all the information from the tank test. It shows that it passes. Um, and this is, this is what we'll give to the client. So this one passed. We're going to save this and I'll get it ready to send to the office. All right, so we, got a, we have a passing tank here. It actually passed on all three parts of the test. Normally, we only need at least two, which would be the soil and the vacuum test. Um, we passed all three here. So we're just going to pack everything up, let the customer know the good news, and uh, on to the next one.